Hi, we're here with Angela Myers in uh, what, what already is looking like a very interesting office. And why don't you why don't you tell our, our viewers about some of the things you do? Because I know you know you do a lot of things, Angela. Thanks, Howard. I'm excited to be here. I am first and foremost um, a lead learner, and what my goal is my background is literacy and linguistics and so my passion about literacy as it relates to culture and environments and to be able to bring that um, idea of a broad view of literacy into classrooms from young students all the way to graduate students which I teach right now is amazing to help them build a language to speak to each other about ideas and the world and themselves and so um, as literacy changes, as our environment changes, whether it's digital or um, otherwise, um, helping look and help schools and teachers um, continue to develop um, the habits that will make them most successful in any environment, which still boil down to their ability to be in the literacy club, to understand big ideas and to communicate those ideas to others and to rally others around those messages. As Frank Smith, um, one of my great mentors, said that's what it means to be in the literacy club and I'm a proud member of that. I do want to talk about um, habitudes which I know is something that that you are 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 very involved in and 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 drill down a little bit more on literacy but I can't help but noticing that's that behind you is a whiteboard that's got some interesting things about self-reflection and yep. depth comprehension group work collaboration um, Tell us what this is about. Let's just quickly take a look at your office and maybe you can give us a little quick tour about what that's about. Excellent. I'd be happy to. I'm working with um, several districts in the state of Iowa or in the state of Hawaii. I've been um, honored to do that for about nine years. And one of the things that literacy teachers do at the beginning of the years is set up students' independent behavior. And so my attempt was to broaden the definition of literacy so that when kids practice, literate behaviors in the classroom starting at kindergarten that they didn't just go work on words and you know go do vowel sounds and clap phonemes that they brought it into as I said this bigger cultural um, world view of what it means to be in the literacy club so what we brainstormed is what privileges are we afforded um, when we are literate when we can communicate within our culture and and across the world and what does it take to be comfortable and to be excited about being literate. So we try to look at, in the beginning of the year, what are the non-negotiables that help somebody um, grow as an individual and as a literate community. And so we talked about how important a common language was, a common vocabulary. We talked about how beginning the day by honoring the privilege of being literate and um, how important self-reflection was and deep study and the focus of meaning making and that it's not then something that we're going to lightly present to kids and hope that they get it. So this is what I call the scope before the sequence because so many um, institutions, institutions focus on the sequence. You know, we've got to teach the sounds first and then the letters. And on Tuesday, we've got to teach this book and on Wednesday, that book. And we forget about the scope of what it means to be alive and to be learning and to be literate. And so um, to the side of the board, and I'll share a picture with you later, we scoped out what the first four to five weeks of school need to be like and what conversations have to be um, laid out so that this culture is created, that we're living and breathing and immersed in this amazing culture of reading and writing and thinking at every grade level, using a common language, and then what those specific explicit lessons that we need to model as lead learners need to be. And we broke each week into a theme. Um, what does it mean to be literate as, as a reader and a writer, what does it mean to be that? And who do I want to become? And, and then what does it mean to be literate with and for other people? And then in, in learning and in the world. And so we just, I'm trying, I'll meet with them tomorrow and we'll try to lay out those lessons and those ideas. So that's what the board is behind us. You, uh, you talk and, and you write and you do videos about changing rules of, of literacy. Yeah. 
tell tell me about that. What what are the changing rules of literacy, and and, and how does that relate to what you just said about habitudes and about digital media? Yeah. The fundamentals of what it means to be literate have not changed. Literacy, in the million ways it's described, is, is simply about, at the very basic level, communication, input and output of meaning and message. So if you go back to Frank Smith's work, he said the signature defining attributes of a literate individual is somebody who can understand complex messages, who can communicate their understandings and ideas around those messages in a way others can understand it. And third, any individual that can rally another, a group or a community around that message. Now, if you think of those three basic attributes of what he defined as being in the literacy club, those have not changed. In fact, they've become fundamentally more important. We spent a lot of time in our schools talking about the consumption of someone else's message. So critical thinking or Higher order thinking is not new. It's been in our disciplines and in our schools for decades. So, so that part's not that big a deal. I mean, it's a big deal, but it's not fundamentally like, wow, this is so, you know, so different. I think the two big differences in a digital space in terms of literacy and learning are the ability to contribute in clear, consistent, empowering, impacting ways your ideas. And that's more than writing. On the web is more than writing because it's writing to make an impact because anybody can say whatever they want to say on the web the challenge of the web as you talked about is is somebody going to think it's crap or not how are you going to be worthy of somebody's attention how are you going to be worthy of being heard that's the question so that goes into the third tier of what frank smith was saying is your is your content impactful enough to cause someone else to stop for 6 to 11 seconds, which is about the time you'll get from an online reader, from their eyes and from their hearts. If you capture that in 6 to 11 seconds, you might have a shot in the billions and billions of bytes or exabytes of information. So being heard isn't about being smart. Einstein could write the theory of relativity and blog about it, but if he didn't reveal who he is, and what kind of intention he had behind the message if he didn't do it in the right medium and honor the medium as well as the community that rallies around that medium for example Twitter if he didn't write it in 140 bits or he didn't write a good headline on his YouTube video about the theory of relativity if he didn't honor the language system and culture in place across that space then he's not going to be heard whether he's Einstein or not 